So I recently asked on Twitter if people want me to show you how I make some pixel art. Because I've done a lot of pixel art here. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Some are better than others. I got a medium response. So what I've decided to do is, is recreate a very well loved Sonic background. So here we have Hilltop's background. Now I definitely had a lot of requests for Mystic Cave, but when I looked, I couldn't really think about what I could add to Mystic Cave. It's so good already. So I mean, this background looks pretty good as it is. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. The clouds look great. Uh, the, I, the mountains could definitely improve. So when I'm making a background for Sonic Studio, the first thing I will do is separate the background out into layers. Even if it wasn't originally set out this way, I like to add layers to what I'm doing. Okay, so now we have the image broken up into different layers. We have the sky, we have the mountains at the back, we have the close mountains, and we have the clouds. So I think the first thing I would actually do is just try some things on a small area of the mountains, see what looks good. I can see that I need to add some colors. So I'm just gonna give some things a try and, and see what looks good. So this will take a while to, for me to actually know if I like how it's going. Um, I like the stylization that these mountains actually have. So any details that I add to them, I'm going to try and keep them sort of vertical as well, since they're originally cylinders, I guess. And I think that's actually not looking too bad as a sort of test. Definitely far from done, but I don't think I've lost the essence of what these are meant to look like. But there's still far more detail there and you can already tell more that it's rock. So now what I'm going to do is just, just build upon this foundation. I'm going to add more colours and then we'll really start to see if this is going to work. Okay, so I think this is going pretty well. Even this section has a long way to go. I'm a bit concerned it's starting to look more like tree bark than rock. So I think there's some texturing I can do to what's currently here. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. So the idea behind adding these dots is to make the rock seem more porous. So it's not, it's not dithering, it's an attempt at texture, making your eyes think that the rock's got more detail than it actually has. And at this point I'm just trying to think um, which of these cracks do I like, which don't I like. Some of them are a bit distracting. I'm just gonna go through and, and add and remove things that I think will make it look more like I have in my head. So now I'm just gonna finalize it and I'm gonna start applying it to the other areas. So a couple of tips for doing this quickly, uh, when you already have a section made, you can just copy different pieces and paste them on in a sort of mosaic and then just paint over that and it will look brand new. So that's one time saver. Another thing to do once you have the design that you want to replicate down, just use a big brush and just paint on blocks of colour. Once they're on there you can then build the detail around that. So as you can see, I'm applying the texture to each section of the mountain. In an area like this, where there's one area right next to another, pick one that will be in front and one that will be behind. Put this area in shadow, just by cycling the colours back a bit. Looking back and forth, I think I might have made the effect a bit too strong. So I'm going to see if I can lessen it, at least on the front face. I'm uh, just going to try selecting an area. Yeah, there's less detail when I look through them, but I think it more closely matches the original. And I really don't want to drift too far away.
Um, just as a base, I would say that these front mountains are more or less done now. There's certainly some touch-ups that could be done. These things usually take a while until you're 100% happy with them. I am going to move on to the back mountains now. So to me, I like to think of these, these back mountains as distant foreground, I guess. And so with that in mind, we can make them look a little bit more interesting. As you can notice, they currently repeat um, every few pixels. It's not a very large area to work with. We are going to repeat this much but then we'll add variations so it doesn't even look repeated. When you're doing this sort of thing and adding like level elements in the background, you've got to consider how far away it seems. And I'd say these, these orange mountains are already pretty far away. So the ones right at the back, are just gone. They're so far away you won't be able to see any rings or, or details like that but there are still things you can do to make it seem more alive. So Hilltop is known for its caves and lava specifically so adding some of those or just evidence of them would really help. Whoops, I drew this on the wrong layer. <laughs> Luckily, nothing to worry about. I think some things we can get away with adding are the cable lift things, just done pretty roughly there. And I'm gonna change the size of some of these uh, peaks for more variation. Already, I think we've made a significant improvement. Really now, it's just just improving on it, adding things, making sure that nothing looks too much like the original. Because if it does, that means you haven't done enough work. So as I said, we're gonna repeat these same mountains. And you know, that still looks good, but we can do better. Simply by lifting up certain sections will already be creating the illusion that there's more variation than there actually is. Check that out, miles of variation already. Although the lava pools are looking a bit repetitive, so I'm gonna change the size of some of them. Okay, and we're done with those mountains. I'm only joking, of course we're not. Something I like to do is actually add another layer. I guess the quickest way I can show this is by just duplicating the mountain layer, making it around half the size. It's about half. Lift up a bit. Okay, so it looks like a bit of a mess so far. Okay, before we can make this look better, uh, we have to do the sky, okay? Because the sky will dictate the colors that we want to use. You know, they are working with a limited palette originally, but that isn't how we roll here. So a lot of my backgrounds include clouds in the sky. We're kind of above the clouds right now, so I want to make a point of not putting clouds in the sky, just to emphasize the fact that we're above that. So I'm going to see how we go without them. So I'm just going to create a, a really simple sky gradient, and I need to pick a color to basically end up at more of a cyan. That may work. And you know, I don't, I don't put a ton of thought into this, Um, a tip once you've got this far is actually just to work on a, a small horizontal section because basically you're going you're gonna to stretch it afterwards. I think that will probably end up being enough, enough colours. So let's just give that a quick stretch out. Yep, that will work. Definitely don't need any more colours in that. And a style that I've sort of developed for Studio is just to have some streaks. Blending the colours together with, with lines. Okay, that's looking good. So now that we have a sky in place, these mountains behind our actual mountains can have their colour shifted towards that of the sky and that will make them look further away and add depth to the background. I typically don't want to change much of the colour of existing layers, so occasionally, you know, I might have changed these 
blue mountains into to something more like the sky just to make them look further away but in this case they already look pretty far away so I only really need to change things that I'm adding so to do that I'm just gonna pick one of the colors from the sky probably quite a light one and then set the layer to certain transparency it's tough to know but I think that'll look good I'm gonna merge them now so they already look pretty far away just because they, they're so faded but there's a lot of gristly detail going on here um, and a lot of it isn't needed so I'm just gonna get rid of the red from the lava Add a couple of the, uh, the darker greens. And I guess it doesn't look like much right now, but in motion, having two layers there would look a lot better than having one. Something I could do, I don't really have the time, would be to actually paint real looking mountains in the background. So it'd be, you could imagine it as looking at 30 of these, these front blue mountains in the back uh, with much greater variation. So they would look more like your typical peak mountains. But I've drawn so many of those. I've drawn some in, in marble and in spring yard. And, you know, it's much the same as what I've done for these front orange mountains. So there's not really any point to show it. And what I've done here looks pretty good. Okay, so back to these front mountains. Before we finish with the clouds, I want to add some more variation to these. Because, I mean, I mean, look at them. They just need it. So I'm going to create two extra layers for these mountains. One will be behind them, one will be in front. I'm gonna copy pieces of these mountains and repurpose them. So to make these ones look further away, we're gonna do a similar color trick, and we're gonna make these mountains look closer to the color of the clouds. Okay, so they look okay. They would scroll by a bit slower. I think adding these um, smaller peaks really emphasizes the fact that these are mountains poking through the clouds and not mountains that are just sort of sitting on clouds. So let's do a bit more of that. So the clouds actually get brighter towards the bottom and that's something that I'm not gonna change. So uh, let's see if making the mountains brighter at the front helps. Okay, nice. There will be things we can do to help this sort of feel more like it's supposed to. And that will come with upgrading the clouds. And I'm sure this will go great. So the original seems to repeat after two tiles. So really I'm just going to try and draw a new texture that will make use of the new space. One thing I'm giving this is a lighting direction. The original seemed to skip that part. So I am trying to make it look like it's lit from the, the left. I think already I have more variation going than there originally was. One thing I guess I should mention is that from the start in the Sonic Studio artwork, I've tried to avoid dithering. I thought, why not just put an extra color if you really don't need to apply any limits? So one of the reasons this looks so repetitive uh, horizontally is because this background is incredibly wide. Mostly they're not this wide, they're quite tall. So this is quite an exception. Okay, so I've added these clouds. They look pretty good, but uh, I think they need some shadows and then they'll be done. All right, and there we go. I think that's all I'm gonna do for this demonstration. There is other things that I would do, given time, uh, like the base of the mountains with the clouds doesn't quite feel like I'd like it to, but it works for this. You get what I'm going for and yeah, it's not bad. And that's that. Uh, I think that went pretty well, actually. I hope you learned something. 